It's Tuesday. You know what that means? It's raw review time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But before we get into the review, guys, I want to give my my condolences to Brody Lee, Luke Harper, the man who unfortunately passed away uh, yesterday on Monday for me here in Australia to other people in Sun to other people Sunday the unfortunate passing of of, of uh, Brody Lee Luke Harper and uh, the former Intercontinental Champion Smackdown Tag Team Champion former TNT Champion in AEW you know, this man, you know, he was a very talented individual. And as far as I know, he was a really good, he was a really good man. He was a good father. He loved his kids. He always loved to talk about them. And the best thing about the passing of uh, Brody Lee is that the world came together. Now, there were some, there were still some jerks in the community that made it all about WWE versus AEW but to the people that to all the fans that put aside the whole brand war between WWE and AEW and came together as as a family as a community to celebrate this man's death well you know what I mean not in a bad way to me, you people are the honourable people. You are the honourable people, and I look at you as good, as a good example of the community. Because this community is absolute trash. I hate how today's community is with, with today's wrestling fans. So much toxic, toxic, toxicity. So many bad people. To all the people that came together, I thank you all for being respectful. And also, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give my respect to AEW as well. Liking, retweeting tweets from WWE. I greatly appreciate AEW for actually being honorable. Now, yes, this man did work for them for their company. And WWE also had him as Luke Harper. So it was great to see WWE and AEW come together and say, you know what? Let's come together. Let's celebrate this man's death. Let's honor his death in the best way possible. We had Ricochet and Xavier Woods out there. We saw them do the discus clothesline, Luke Harper's finishing maneuver. Tom Phillips did the whole, did the whole, you know what that means. Drew McIntyre did the whole, you know what that means. We saw Alexa Bliss do the yeah, yeah, yeah in the Playhouse. Some other wrestlers did it too. And I'm kind of upset at the fans yet again for getting upset that WWE did not honor him in the 10 bell salute. Now, I feel like the way WWE handled it was a lot better than just the 10 bell salute. Because here's the thing. He doesn't work for WWE anymore. Luke Harper, or Brody Lee, whatever you prefer to call him, he doesn't work for WWE anymore. If he passed away, if he passed away as a WWE superstar, then they would have done the 10 bell salute. But because he didn't pass away as a WWE star, they didn't, you know, do the 10 bell salute. Like I said, we had Tom Phillips do the, it's Monday, you know what that means. Drew McIntyre said the same thing. It's Monday. You know what that means. Ricochet did the discus clothesline. Luke Harper's finisher. So did Xavier Woods. You know what I mean. Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston even took their time on talking on Raw Talk, not Talking Smack, Raw Talk, to even mention him and honor him. So I feel like the way WWE did it was very honorable. And it was a good way to mention him on WWE television. 
And even when, and even Tom Phillips even mentioned his name when Xavier Woods did the discus clothesline. He called it the Harper clothesline. So, so he did mention Harper that way. So I just feel like today's community just... I feel like this should really help fans understand. This should really bring fans together and understand this isn't about a war. This isn't about WWE versus AEW. We're not here for a war. We're not here to try and strangle each other to death over which company is better. We're all here to celebrate. It's wrestling. Seriously, this is wrestling. This isn't something... That people should be fighting over. This isn't something we should be arguing over. Something we should be, you know, punching each other in the face for. We're all a big community. We're all a big community. And we all should be gathering together like family. Like friends. Come together. Respect people's opinions. Respect what people love. Because things like this, it happens. And it's a, and it's a, and it's a tragedy. It's such a tragedy that Luke Harper, or Brody Lee, whatever you prefer to call him, was his life was taken away so so early. It's a tragic. It's tragic. He passed away due to lung cancer, or lung issues. I'm pretty sure that's what it means, lung cancer. And it's a and it's a it's a shame. It's a real shame. So I'm gonna give my prayers to. Luke Harper, Brody Lee. This review is going to be in his honor. I'm going to be putting the hashtag RIP on the on the uh, title of this video as well. So so this video is going to be in his honor. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, you absolute brilliant, oh, brilliant man. So the show began with Drew McIntyre kicking off the show, talking about, again, as I said, mentioned Luke Harper with the It's Monday, you know what that means. He mentioned, he brought that up. And then he talked about Seamus and Keith Lee. These two men were vying for a chance. Whoever ended up winning would face Drew McIntyre for the title on Raw Legends. I am not looking forward to the Raw Legends show, to be perfectly honest. Like, it's just full of nostalgia acts. Sure, it's going to be cool to see someone like Melina back. But other than other than Melina, really nobody else I really am looking forward to seeing back. But, um... So yeah, I just really don't care, to be perfectly honest. Like, all these legends coming back, it's only done for one reason. To pop a rating. Because the ratings have been trash. It's the only reason why WWE are doing it. So anyway, we had, so yeah, we had Keith Lee versus Sheamus. The winner of this match would go on to face Drew McIntyre for the title on, on the first Raw of 2021. And uh, the man that was uh, buried... According to the smarties of the wrestling community, the man that got buried wins this match. Keith Lee. I thought this dude was buried, right? I thought this dude was buried. Wasn't this guy buried for losing to Miz and Morrison in a handicap match? I thought he was buried. This is his second win in a row. Yes, he's buried. He's totally buried because he's now earned himself a chance at the WWE Championship. Imagine if Keith Lee actually wins the WWE Championship. If he wins the WWE Championship, then everybody should take back what they said about Drew McIntyre being... about um, Keith Lee, not Drew McIntyre, about Keith Lee being buried. But even if Drew McIntyre beats Keith Lee, people will go back to saying, you now he's buried. Now he is officially buried. Keith Lee is now officially buried. He is not officially buried. He never will be buried. Vince McMahon is high on Keith Lee. Vince is a big fan of Keith Lee. When will you people get that through your heads? Just because you lose a match doesn't mean Vince has given up on you or the experiment is over or Vince has had enough of you. 
That's not the case. Vince is a big fan of Keith Lee. And Keith Lee will be WWE Champion. Could very well be next year. Could very well be on Raw next week. Or sometime down the road in 2021. So then we had Grand Metallic face off against The Miz, who was having a whinge about not getting his Money in the Bank briefcase back. And by the way, WWE literally gave him his Money in the Bank back. No joke, they literally gave it back to him. They had they had Adam Pierce off. Yes, I called him Pierce off. They had Adam Pierce off actually come and give Miz his briefcase back. All because John Morrison was the one that cashed it in. Pierce off said... Oh, John Morrison was the one that cashed it in. You're the official owner, so you can have the briefcase back. Bullshit! Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. You mean to tell me... So that means Baron Corbin should have been allowed to get his briefcase back. That means John Cena should have been allowed to get his back when he lost his. That means Damien Sandow should have been allowed to get his back. That means Braun Strowman should have been allowed to get his back. All the people that failed to lose... Like, like Braun Strowman, he lost his briefcase due to Brock Lesnar interfering, causing a double, a double DQ or whatever the hell they did. No contest? Braun lost, it. Braun lost his in a no contest inside a hell in a cell. How come he didn't get his back? Absolute disgraceful. This is an absolute disgrace. You cannot just give someone their briefcase back. Once it's gone, it's gone. No excuses. Absolute bullshit. Absolute bullshit. They just, they just give the Miz his briefcase back. Now watch him cash it in and successfully become WWE Champion. Bullshit. I'm sorry. This is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. And we had Dana Brooke. In one-on-one -on -one action with Shayna, I do not give a shit about you, Baszler. And I won't lie, this was a decent match. Dana Brooke put up a hell of a fight against Shayna Baszler. So Shayna Baszler, for some bizarre reason, just started attacking Mandy Rose. She didn't do anything. Tried to break her arm again. She even tried to break Dana Brooks' arm. But Shayna does eventually get the win. Shayna Baszler obviously gets the win. Because you can't have her lose to Dana Brooke. Otherwise, if you have her lose to Dana Brooke, the whole community will start saying she's buried, right? Seriously, Dana Brooke is a better wrestler than Shayna Baszler. Well, Shayna Baszler is freaking boring as hell. You watch a Shayna Baszler match, you understand how boring she is. Just... Kicks and submissions. Kicks kicks and submissions and trying to break people's arms. That's all Shayna does. Boring. Absolute freaking boring. Dana Brooke is far superior of a wrestler than Shayna Baszler. Dana Brooke put up a hell of a fight. That's all I can really say. She put up a hell of a fight. Shayna Baszler then for some reason just tried to... Just choked out Mandy Rose for doing for, because she just felt like it. Completely un, uncalled for. But hey, it's Shayna Baszler, right? Shayna Baszler needs to do this to get her credibility back after losing to Lana. Give me a break. We had AJ Styles take on Elias. You know, this actually wasn't a bad match. This match got a lot of time in, and, 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 and it's very surprising to see Elias actually come to the ring with his actual theme music, and not just the ring announcer going, Ladies and gentlemen, Elias. You know, I want to see more of that. I want to see Elias actually come to the ring more with his music, instead of just being all like, Ladies and gentlemen, Elias. 
Time to move on from that. This wasn't a bad match. This wasn't a bad match. Yes, despite Jackson Riker being out there, who's a complete bum, and who's a complete bum, this match was okay. This match was actually pretty good. And AJ Styles got the victory with the phenomenal forearm. Then we had Mustafa Ali face off against Rick O'Shea. This was a, another fun match. And we had a very scary moment in this match as well. Where um, Rick O'Shea... Rick O'Shea! As, his, as how his theme song says it. Uh, he, he jumped over... He, he went up to the top rope. He jumped out of the ring. And, and he was going to do a Tornado DDT on Dominic Dijakovic or T-Bar. As they annoyingly call him. And it, and, and it was such a scary spot. Ricochet almost killed the guy. It, it, look, it looked like T-Bar was not expecting that at all. It looked like he clearly wasn't expecting it. It clearly looked like he wasn't ready. Or maybe he, he wasn't in the right position. But Jesus Christ, that was absolutely scary. Ricochet could have seriously injured him. So I am hoping he is okay. So I am hoping uh, Dijak is okay. So, so then Ricochet takes out Shane Thorne and Dio Madden. Takes, takes them out. And then Ricochet goes up to the top rope looking for a shooting star press. What happened to the 630? I thought the 630 was his finishing move. What happened to the 630? Can someone tell me what happened to that? So the 630 is now gone and to replace with the shooting star press now. And Ali reversed it into the Kuji clutch. Or as it is called, according to Tom Phillips, it is called the lights out. Makes sense. Makes sense. And a and I guess it's a good name for the move. Good name for the move. Nia Jax uh, instrumented herself into the uh, women's Royal Rumble match. Great. That's exactly what we want to need. We that's exactly what we want to need. We need to see. We need. We need to see. Little, little, big old Nia in the Royal Rumble. And Shayna Baszler obviously feels like it's a good idea. She'll probably eventually add herself too. And that'll be where Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax's tag team comes to an end. They'll enter the Royal Rumble. One of, the, one of them is going to toss out the other one, setting up their feud. Calling it now. Calling it now. Nia Jax. I'm calling it now. Either Nia Jax eliminates Shayna Baszler, or Shayna Baszler eliminates Nia Jax. Either way it goes, e either way it goes, their tag team ends at the Royal Rumble. Also, Randy Orton, before we move on to other things, we'll talk about other stuff as well, the segments. Uh, Alexa Bliss had another Alexa Bliss Playhouse segment. Who cares about your Playhouse Bliss? No one cares. But she wanted Randy Orton to come to her Playhouse and play with her. Randy Orton's not the playing type, Little Miss Bliss. Sure, Alexa Bliss is doing good in this role, but I just don't like her in this role. The goddess was so much better. I want the Alexa Bliss of old. The Alexa Bliss I actually liked. That's the Alexa Bliss I want. The Alexa Bliss of old. This crazy, wacky Alexa Bliss. Sure, it has its moments, but just not a big fan of it. And then Randy Orton appears inside the fun house. He kicks the pig in the face. He grabs the uh, Mercy, the pa Mercy, the buzzard, or whatever he's called. Throws him into Abby. He start, and then he cracks Rambling Rabbit's head open. And Alexa Bliss starts crying and telling him to stop it, to leave them alone. And then he challenges Randy. 
and she challenges Randy to come to the ring. At first, I was thinking, at first, I was thinking, there is no way they are legitimately going to have Alexa Bliss get in the ring with Randy Orton and actually try and, th and wrestle each other. No way. And that wasn't ex exactly what happened, which, honestly, I'm actually glad because not Randy Orton would have completely murdered her in the ring. So now we'll move forward to Charlotte Flair taking on Nia Jax. This match was, you know, it was definitely a lot better than their first encounter. <laughs> I will say that. If there's a plus, if, there's, if there is a plus about this match, it was a lot better than the first time they met. The, lo the, the, the last time they met in a singles match, the last time they met in a singles match, was when Nia Jax dropped Charlotte on her head and damn near killed her. So that's the so that's the plus about this match. Nia Jax didn't try to kill Charlotte this time. So that's the plus. So this match was a lot better than their first encounter. Not wasn't spectacular, obviously. But Charlotte wins by disqualification. Shayna Baszler has a finish with putting blonde girls in the Karafuda clutch. And that, then she just runs into the ring, puts Sh Charlotte Flair in the Karafuda clutch to cause the disqualification. If I were you, Shayna Baszler, I'd mind my own business. Unless you want to get your unless you want to get your ass planted with the natural selection like what happened to you at TLC, if I were you, I'd stay out of this. Charlotte Flair's already beaten you before, and she has no problem, and she would have no problem kicking your ass again like she did at TLC. And then we had the lame business take on the New Day, Jeff Hardy, and the most annoying wrestler on the face of the planet, Riddle. This guy is by far the most annoying character I have ever seen. Matt Riddle, I I never liked Matt Riddle. I never liked him at all. But now he's just getting worse and worse and worse every single time I see this dude. He is absolutely annoying. He is one of the most annoying superstars I have ever seen in my entire life. I like I don't even find his shit funny. I find his shit nauseating. The bro nuts, disgusting and, and disgusting and stupid. Everything that this man does is stupid. He, he and he's also one of the most. He has also has one of the most annoying voices I've ever heard. Seriously, coming up with nicknames and stable names for his partners and all this ridiculous shit. I don't blame Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods walking away. Heading to the ring. I would have, I would have done that too. I would have, I, I would have done that too, if I was teaming up with that bozo. I feel bad for everybody who has to work with this dude, especially poor old Mandy Rose. This dude's wife said nasty things about her. Not just Mandy Rose, Becky Lynch. Seriously, Matt Riddle is one. Matt Riddle and Matt Riddle is just disgusting, and he is just. He's just annoying. I just can't stand this dude. I can't stand him. He's a dickhead. And that's really all I can say about that. This was the match where uh, Xavier Woods did the discus clothesline, the Luke Harper clothesline. That was a nice, that was a nice homage. And the Hurt Business, of course they do, win the match. You can't have the Hurt Business lose. You want to talk about Charlotte Flair always winning? You may as well turn. You may as well turn the Hurt Business winning all the time into a meme. Seriously, this is absolutely ridiculous. The Hurt Business are uh, like the Hurt Business are lame. Never liked this stable. This is only doing good for someone like Cedric Alexander. This is the only thing that is good about this stable is the fact that this is doing good for someone like Cedric Alexander. Who gives a shit about Bobby Trashley, and who gives a shit about Shelton Benjamin? Seriously, 
The only reason why the, the, these three superstars are at the... Cedric's a good wrestler, but the only reason why Lashley and Benjamin are as, as successful as they are now is because of MVP. That's all. That's the only reason. If MVP was not in this stable, if MVP wasn't a part of this stable, or if MVP ended up leaving or he got injured, these three guys would be literally nothing without him. Lashley went from dating Lana to this. Shelton Benjamin went from being a complete utter nobody to this. And Cedric Alexander went from being a complete joke to this. Some people may say, oh, this is a good thing because it's, resurrect their, it's resurrected their careers. Yeah, well, what's going to happen when the Hurt Business ends? Whose career will be... What, what happens when the hurt, when this Hurt Business stuff runs its course? What will happen to Cedric and Shelton? What will happen to Bobby when this Hurt Business stuff runs its course? It's going to end at some point. It's not going to last forever. You know that, right? It's not going to last forever. Yeah, so what, so what happens when, 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 it, when, it, when it runs its course? They're going to go right back to the way they were before. That's what's going to happen. So there you go, guys. And, and, oh, wait. And there was one more thing. The last thing that happened was Alexa Bliss and Randy Orton's uh, final segment together. And that was Alexa Bliss coming to the ring, challenging Randy Orton. Randy Orton thinks this is all just a trick. And she asks him, where is he? And she said, this isn't about him. This is about me. So she brings out a lighter. And the, and, and, and the oil can. And an oil, and an oil can. And she tells Randy Orton to set her on fire just like he did to the Fiend. What a sick and sadistic thing for a human being to tell someone to do. Kill me. That's what she that's what that's exactly what Alexa Bliss was literally telling Randy Orton to do. Kill me. Kill me. Put me on fire. You killed the fiend, now kill me! This woman is sick and sadistic. You wanna talk about you wanna talk about sick and sadistic? Alexa Bliss is just that. Why oh why would Alexa Bliss volunteer to set to tell Randy to set her on fire? What a ridiculous thing to say. I think it's absolutely ridiculous of Alexa Bliss to even think of that. She starts pouring herself with gasoline. That's what it was. She starts pouring it all over the ring. Starts yelling at Randy Orton to set her on fire. Then she starts crying. Then Randy Orton gets in her face and he said, I will, I will burn you alive. I'll put you on fire. You want... You want to be put on fire? You want to see the fiend again? Fine. I will light you on fire and I will kill and I will burn you. That Andy Orton literally was about to burn her, and the and then the show ended with Randy about to burn Alexa Bliss and set her on fire. Cliffhanger. A cliff. Hanger ending. Love it. I absolutely love cliffhanger endings. I think this is the first time in, uh, in a while that WWE has given us a cliffhanger ending that makes us go, oh my god, what's going to happen now? I absolutely love this ending. This was a great ending and a good way to get people you know, interested in watching Raw next week. This legend show isn't going to be great, but maybe Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre could be entertaining. 
and the aftermath of what Randy Orton did to Alexa Bliss could be another interesting thing. And of course, the women, of course. And of course, the women always shining on these shows. That always makes that always makes wrestling great. The women always doing their thing. So other than that. Yeah, so for the first time in a while, I can actually sit here and tell you guys that this was actually a good Raw. Finally, for the first time in months, I can actually tell you guys this was a good Raw. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe. Comment your thoughts down below. And once again, rest in peace, Luke Harper. Slash Brody Lee. See you all next time.